This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a married woman. I'm torn between my husband and my boyfriend. In a love triangle dilemma. Secret phone calls, making out in public. You're having sex in the woods. That's tacky. I don't do stuff like that. Uh-uh. But otherwise, what you're doing, it doesn't hit the tacky meter. This boyfriend, he's on the phone. There may be some bias that you have. You're right. I do have a bias. I think you need to butt out of these people's marriage and leave them alone. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night to meet her boyfriend, hiding in the woods, making out in public, secret phone calls, sneaking around. You think we're talking about a rebellious teen, right? We're talking about a married mother of four and the length she goes to to hook up with her boyfriend of a year. Yep. Now, I said boyfriend, and her husband, well, he knows all about him. Now, we all know infidelity is nothing new, but this summer a national survey made headlines when it unmasked a new face of infidelity for the first time ever. Women admitted cheating almost as much as men. Earlier this week, I tweeted that I was working on a show about female cheaters, and my Twitter blew up with your stories and opinions. If you want to join the discussion, you can tweet me at Dr. Phil hashtag cheaters. But first, Lisa and her husband, Rick, are at war over Lisa's very open, year-long affair with another man. She insists it would never happen if Rick treated her with any amount of love and compassion. Take a look. I've been having an affair because I felt unloved. Rick treats me like crap. Rick's horribly abusive. He calls me a psycho, a slut, or that I sleep with the whole neighborhood. Rick has pushed me and choked me. He was disinterested in being intimate with me. It made me feel rejected. She is with her boyfriend every day. When Lisa says she's going for a walk, she typically meets her boyfriend in the woods. I've probably caught Lisa with her boyfriend 30 or more times. I met my boyfriend 11 and a half months ago. He asked me if I was married. I said, yeah, he said, we're happily married. I said, I didn't say I was happily married. My boyfriend and I have been seeing each other ever since. He was a very comforting person, very warm, very sensitive, and very caring. And he really took an interest in my plight. My boyfriend makes me feel like a princess, like I'm valued, like I'm loved. My husband, Rick, makes me feel like I'm nothing. The boyfriend has threatened me numerous occasions that he was going to hurt me. Lisa has relayed threats from him, saying he knows a lot of shady characters. So to watch my back, because he's going to have somebody else take care of me. Lisa's boyfriend has threatened bodily harm on my kids as well. Just last night, I did try breaking up with my boyfriend. When my boyfriend and I break up, we don't stop talking. Once Rick does something mean, I always run back to my boyfriend. I need to know that you're completely done with your so-called boyfriend. And if you can't give me that, then we need to walk our separate ways. And you can stay with that loser. I'm torn between my husband and my boyfriend. My heart is telling me one thing. My head is telling me another. Well, Rick says, well, he just, look, I don't care what her excuses are and insists it is his right as a husband to keep her from this other man. Take a look. Rick is the most controlling person I've ever met. I feel like a prisoner in my own home. I'm not doing a very good job as a warden keeping her as a prisoner because she gets to see her boyfriend on a daily basis. Rick put a tracking device on my car. He constantly follows me. 
Vic holds me against my will when he thinks I'm going to see my boyfriend. I have tried to keep Lisa from seeing her boyfriend. I believe it, it's within my right as a husband to try to keep her away from him. About six weeks ago, we were in the bedroom, he held my wrist down, and he intertwined his legs around mine so that I couldn't move. I kept saying, you're hurting me, you're hurting me, let me go. And the only way I got free was the remote control next to me on the bed, and I picked it up and hit him in the head. I caught Lisa walking down the street, and I knew exactly where she was going, so I told her to get in the car. Rick grabbed my purse, and he almost knocked me to the ground. He said, you're not going anywhere. I was crying, and I said, just take me home. I want to go home. The neighbor told the police that he thought somebody was being kidnapped. Rick was trying to kidnap me to keep me away from my boyfriend. I feel like a caged animal. If Rick treated me better, I wouldn't be caught between two men. Okay, let's... Let me just start us off by saying this. Is there a point at which you would say enough's enough? Because yeah, yeah. We, obviously we haven't hit it. Here, right. here's, what, here's what we know. Um, we know that this has been going on for at least a year, right? Eleven and a half months. Uh, we know this isn't your first time. This is your third, right? Right. Ten years into the marriage, the first time, 15 years later, and this is the third. Okay, and, and then this one. So yes. you've been at this for a while. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what is your discontinuation criteria? At what point do you say, you know what, this is not a marriage. I mean, she's sleeping with the neighborhood and then coming home, and sometimes she'll be out with her boyfriend, come home at one o'clock in the morning, and you just pull the covers back for and let her slide right in. Sometimes five or six in the morning, but I've always believed in hope, hoping that, uh, that we can work so something out, but obviously that's not the way but it's But what going. have you done to work on it? H have you been to therapy? Have not been. Excuse me, I've been to marital therapy one time and he showed up 15 minutes late and he said, the, the counselor said, do you think it's a problem? And he said, no, I don't see a problem. She said, your wife's crying, that was years ago. Uh, what'd they tell you? To leave him. Why? He's cheated on me since I was eight months pregnant over and over and over again and never stopped except for a few months in between times. Uh -huh. you, you say he's cheated on you 15 or 20 times? Yes. At least. That's not true. Is that true? No, it's not true. I'm willing to take a polygraph for it. I, I had two one-night stands, and, and the last one's probably over 14, 15 years ago. Uh, excuse me, I have two months ago, you told me it was then. five times two months ago. No, it's... So help me God, two. you did. So you've tried to bribe her to stay, right? Yes. You, you buy her things, you, you give her spa days and stuff like that. You understand, no. she goes to spa day, gets all fluffed up for him. No, no, no. He t You're I fluffing her up for him? Uh, it's $300 me, a, a pop when excuse I me, take Dr. her to Phil. get her face done. Excuse me. I don't have a car. I don't have a credit card. I've never had a credit card in this marriage. The house is not in my name. Well, you don't I need don't one. Have you got two keys. men taking care of you. What do you need a no, credit no, card No, I've for? never had it. Never, ever, ever. That I've house is even I've in I've given her name. one of the vehicles back He's a couple times. She promised she, I told her there's one criteria. You do not use the car to go get a hookup and meet him. He locks me out. And she would take the car and go meet him and hook him up. Hook up with him, so I keep taking the one back. time, one time. Twice. Did I do that once? You know, listen, I, I'm just kind of a common sense guy. This just seems to me like you guys are working at a train wreck. This is a very hot topic among people, and when I tweeted I was going to do this show, it just blew up. Here's what a viewer is tweeting right now Once you put a ring on it, you're committed to working things out with that partner. No third parties allowed. Uh, do you agree with that? I that's agree just, with that's that. just a viewer at home right now watching. I, I, I agree with that. I'm not the one that started this. When I was eight months pregnant, he said I was no fun. I said, well, I didn't get myself pregnant. At one, one instance, we were so in you're a, store. a victim here. Well, in some ways, I am. I'm not saying 100 percent, uh, you know, that I'm not going to take 100 or some of the responsibility, but 100 percent is not mine. You have this boyfriend right now, right? Yes. And you, you just love him. You think he's just a prize egg, right? Um, well, let's see. He treats me with respect. Right. He um, listens to me. Right. He's loving. loving. He's caring. He's caring. sensitive. Sensitive. Um, he's... Treats you with respect. Yes. In, the, in the woods. Uh, it was my idea to meet... <laughs> okay, we met in the woods because he was following... Rick was following him. Rick bought a gun and threatened to kill him. Uh, and, the, and your boyfriend has the, threatened to beat up your husband and your son. 
uh, because they were yep. cussing him out. They hit on his truck. He had all of them, my two sons and him, corner him at night. They beat on his truck. They cussed him out. He kept saying, get out of the truck. They all were going to tag team him. He parked right in front of, of the house. What do you want he him to do? He didn't park in front of the house. Yeah, That's not true. So you're the defending all of this then? Um, I'm so not you didn't come here and change this to fix this. You came here to defend it. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not condoning what I do. I'm trying to set the record straight. He has this habit of changing things around and giving only his version. And he does well, that to no, me, listen, too. I've listened to... Uh, listen, I've, I've read every word that either one of you have said. Every word. Test me. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, all right, let's take a break. Next, who is this man Lisa calls her boyfriend? Well, we're going to talk to him when we come back. Lisa has cheated on me at least three times. One day I went looking for Lisa, and I found her behind a department store in the dark with her boyfriend. I confronted them, and she said that they were just talking. I told her, why would you be parked in the dark if you just wanted to talk? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My ex-husband abandoned our son. You told him that he was going to stay with you in Florida. Did Dad break his promise? You got rid of him! You dumped him! Or is Mom spreading lies? You're telling me that she's alienating him from you, and then you say, he knows I love him. It can't be both. Oh, really? Why not? Get him out here and have him say I'm that. I'm not going to parade no, him out here. No, because... You're not going to tell me what no. to do. That's tomorrow. Well, we're talking about infidelity, uh, but now, according to a new survey, women admitted to being unfaithful almost as much as men. Now, we decided to run our own survey asking both men and women if they had ever cheated on their current partner, and the results were pretty shocking. 30% of men said yes, 22% of women admitted as well. So it's activity on both sides. Okay, let me ask you something. You are married. You're in love with somebody else, right? I'd rather not answer it. If... What? I'd rather not answer that. You would rather not answer that? And suffer repercussions with him? No. I'd you're okay answer. with him knowing that you're having sex in the woods, but you don't want to say... I didn't have sex in the woods. I met him in the woods. Okay. I'm not a kid. I wouldn't do stuff like that. Plus, that's tacky. I don't do stuff like that. Uh-uh. Tacky. <laughs> but otherwise, what you're doing is... No, it's it, it not right. It doesn't hit the tacky meter. It's, it's not right. But what about him? Why is it everything just on me? Well, I'm, I'm just talking to you right now. I'll get to him in a minute. I, I'll, I'll get to him. I'm just trying to find out what you're willing to own and what you're not. I'm going to tell you the truth about everything, anything you ask me. You in love with this man? <laughs> what? Well, I have to answer that. I mean, I'm not going to lie about it, but... I'm sorry? I'm not going to lie about it, but I really don't want to answer it. Okay, so what you said was a lie. You said, I'll answer anything you want to ask, just ask me. I said, okay. I said, I'll, t I'll tell you the truth. Answer the truth about anything you ask me. Yeah, are you in love with this guy? Probably to some degree. Are you in love with him? No. No. Too much cruelty. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, this boyfriend, and we're not naming him. I don't really care his name. He, he's on the phone. You mind me talking to him? I don't yeah, want to be disrespectful. Fine. It's all right with you. Uh, hello, are you there? Are you on the phone? Yes. Let me ask you something. Do you have any feelings at all about the fact that you're intruding on someone's marriage? But you're sleeping with another man's wife? Well, go back and underline the word marriage again. Like I said, it needs to be, it needs to be something that is a working, a working relationship where they both uh, use empathy and, and uh, respect on a day-to-day -day basis. They, they've lost that way, way back 26 years ago. And uh, no, I don't feel very comfortable about the situation whatsoever. Okay, and, and you, you know all of this because you've been in the home and you've observed the dynamic between the husband and the wife, right? I've, I've been involved. I've not been in the home. I have uh, been on the telephone whenever I've heard uh, different mm -hmm. forms of abuse occur. Mm -hmm. You're listening to her, but the truth is you don't really know a damn thing about what's going on in this marriage, do you? Other than well, what she's told think, you, 
it, it sounds to me like there, there may be some bias that you have as well. I, I fully well think that everyone should try to protect their marriage and try to keep it on the right side of the road. But and unfortunately, he, he started his transgressions way, way back. And I, I wouldn't minimize that uh, personally if I was you. How many times you been married? <laughs> I, was married I was married twice uh -huh. before. Did you cheat on either one of them? <clears throat> there's there's much more important there's much more important things to uh, to discuss related to their uh, their their problems and issues. So right. going back and rehashing some of my history and everything, I really don't don't feel like it's beneficial <laughs> here. And obviously, if he doesn't have the mental background or intellectual or or as far as having empathy for her situations, being a woman with basic you know <laughs> uh, feminine needs. If he's going to overlook her and, on, and have callous in his heart and everything, there's okay, going to um, be a, a lose-lose situation for both of them. She, 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 yeah, I, 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 I hate to... expect that they were going to be divorced by now. Yeah. I, I, I hate to interrupt you, but does that mean you're not going to answer my question about <laughs> about whether you cheated in your other two marriages? Well, I said said before that I felt like that you're getting off the track, and I don't, don't uh, think that that's beneficial to the show either. Okay, uh, so you're going to manage the show now. Okay, so you're managing his marriage and my show. You are a busy, busy guy. Uh, listen, you said I, you think I have a bias, and you're right. I do have a bias. I think you need to butt out of these people's marriage and leave them the hell alone. Is what I think. And I think you are an intruder. I think you are an intruder. I think you are an interloper. If she wants to get a divorce, she can get a divorce. It is important to finish one relationship before you start another relationship and you never improve a marriage by turning away from your partner. We have to take a break. Next, Lisa insists that she's not the only one with a wandering eye. She says Rick has been cheating on her throughout their entire marriage. In fact, she believes he's hiding a secret girlfriend as we sit here now. We'll be right back. I think Rick has had 20 plus affairs. This was my snap. It says, cheating again? Why? She's trying to flip the script and, and call me the cheater now. It's just not true. Did you actually see him shoot himself? Yeah, but I don't remember anything. None of us had anything to do with your son's death. I don't think that they're telling the truth. I'm just upset that I even have to be here. Well, is that inconvenient for you? Both of you cheated in the marriage. Both of you lied in the marriage. I can just imagine being one of your children. I would just so want to tell you people to shut the hell up and sit down. I would like my son to take a paternity test to see if this is my grandson. I told her, bring it on. I have the DNA results in this envelope. I married a con man. There was never any mistruths. Where did you get your ID? Regis and the University of Budapest. University of Budapest doesn't exist. America's most watched talk show. I'm a wonderful person and I'm a kind mother. She's thrown her hot tea on me. She just gets angry. What? Is must watch television. So she is lying here. I don't want to play this blame game. Listen, I'm going to conduct an interview here and I'm sorry if you don't like the questions. This November on Dr. Phil. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity and you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. I found that Lisa had a secret phone that her boyfriend had given her. I saw many of the text messages between him and Lisa. Words to the effect that he wants Lisa to run away with him and leave me. He wanted her to get pregnant so they can be together forever.
Well, why do women cheat? Uh, that's what we're getting to the bottom of today. Lisa admits to having multiple affairs, including a current one that's been going on for over a year. But she says Rick's victim story is a joke. She claims that Mr. Perfect here is a master manipulator and that he is a serial adulterer. Take a look. I think Rick has had 20 plus affairs. I also believe Rick's a sexual addict, but Rick keeps playing the victim. She's trying to flip the script and, and call me the cheater now. She has a vivid imagination. If she has you in her sights, look out, because she's relentless and vicious in her attacks. Lisa came to visit me one time where I worked, and she went straight into my boss's office and accused me of having a relationship with one of the female there in our office. And of course, being in the military, that's not taken lightly. I went to Rick's work. He stopped and stared his female coworker down for what seemed like an eternity. I knew something wasn't right. I actually seduced Rick and hit a small digital tape recorder and I had to do a sex act against my will. It was the only way I can get his confession. When I got his confession, I talked to his superior and presented him with my evidence. Rick immediately said, she's crazy, she's psycho, don't listen to her. An investigation occurred. There was no wrongdoing found. I have circumstantial evidence that Rick has been recently cheating. This was my snack that I was taking to work today. It says, cheating again? Why? And to this day, Lisa continues to accuse me of cheating. It's just not true. Okay, uh, first off, let's get to the bottom of this. Have you had 15 or 20 affairs? No, I have not. Have you had five? No, I have not. You said you had two one-night stands. Yes. Why was that okay? Why were you I, having one-night stands? It wasn't okay. I, Why'd you do it? Uh, I was a lot younger at the time, and it's, I was, I guess, the thrill of it. And it happens. It happened twice, and the last one was uh, 12, 13 years ago. If this has been going on in your marriage, he's admitted to two. He's You've lying. He told me to two months ago it was five. So help me, God is God is my witness. Let's, for argument's sake, let's say he's had five. Okay? I, I'm not saying you have. I'm just saying for argument's sake, let's say he's had five, and you've had three that we know about. Why, why have y'all not done anything I, about this in I all of this time? I have gone to counselors. I've begged him. He wouldn't do it. He said, you're crazy. You're psycho. Just leave me alone. He said, I need my space. You don't understand. I guess I was weak. I, I thought, where am I going to go? He made good money. I wasn't... You know, I had odd jobs here and there, security guards. Is, is this thing working? C can you hear me at all? Because it's like you're having a conversation with somebody, not me. My question was, why have in all of these years... How long have you been married? 26, 26 years. 26 years. 26 years. Why in 26 years have you two not done anything responsible to try to work on this? You have children here. You are role models here. You're modeling that lying is okay, deceit is okay, cheating is okay, and you're modeling, hey, whatever, you know, I'll just yell, scream, call names, whatever. Hey, car keys, you, lock you, me out of the house. You, I'm doing okay. Sorry. I'm doing all right. Sorry. I'm doing all right. You're a right fighter, woman. You mm -hmm. want to be right. But boy, you're starting from way back in the pack if you want to take the self-righteous chair. I don't. Now, I'm just asking you why, are you, why haven't you done anything about this? Why haven't you worked on this? I can't answer that. Like I said, I talked to my pastor about it at church. What did your now, pastor say? He says to uh, marriage is sacred to keep, keep working at, at it. He said keep working, working at, it. at it. It means to make efforts towards a known outcome, working at it. So you, you, you didn't listen to your pastor either? I spent most of my time, I guess, trying to keep her, her away from him. Did you kidnap her recently? I caught her walking down the street, and I knew exactly where she was going because I had seen her boyfriend's truck, his red truck, a couple blocks away headed towards the pickup point. So I told her, get in the car, let's go, let's, let's talk. So she got in the car, and I just drove. For I how long? She, no. It's about 30 miles. And you told you me... You kept me hostage you, for 40 minutes. You told me you, you wanted to go back you told home. Me, you would get something to eat. I oh, believed her, took her for her word. So I went back home, and she, within five minutes, she was out the door, and she didn't come home till 2.30 in the morning after she took off. Why not just get a divorce? I mean, if you want out that bad, listen... I, I keep thinking he'll change. Far, I, I, far be it for me to recommend divorce. I take marriage very seriously. I do. I, I really do. I, do I take marriage very seriously. I... I, I don't think people should throw marriages away uh, precipitously. But on the other hand, after 26 years 
and you're currently in love with somebody else who's meeting all your emotional needs and physical needs and apparently intellectual needs. Not financial needs. Um, <laughs> why, you know, wh wh why are you doing this? Answer my question one time, just so I could say it happened. Excuse you want to marry him? Closed captioning provided by... Why are you doing this? Uh, you know... What's really I, going on here? I, I really don't know. I think because what you have to understand is um, my parents were very overprotective. They met really late. And okay, when so I was, stop, 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 stop. I've never been alone. Okay, there, there you have it. That's what I was trying to get to. I had a boyfriend. I was 18. Then I met him. I've never been... I don't know what it's like to be alone. Well, you're not alone now. You're in a sandwich. Leaving him, you're not going to be alone. You can, you can go meet the red truck guy. Um, I have to be 100% sure about anything. I, I've learned I'm not... Does he you know, not want you? Yeah, he wants me. He wants to get married and everything. You Excuse want to me. marry him? Um, I You'd don't think third. so. You'd, I don't you'd be his third. Yeah, I, I don't think so. This is no. a man that threatened your son? Uh, my son threatened him first. I don't uh, agree no, no, with no, no, that. No, no, I no, 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 wait a minute. The, answer my question one time, just so I could say it happened. This man threatened your son with bodily harm. Um, in a roundabout way, yeah. He said, if, if someone walks up to Jordan and punches him in the mouth, I, I won't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Is this your son right here? Yes. And did he threaten you? Yes, he did. What did he say? He said he was going to beat me up. Uh -huh. how, how do you feel about that? I didn't hear that. Of course, I don't want my son hurt. I don't want him touched by anyone. No, I love him. You, do you believe your son? Yeah, but I didn't hear it. Where was I when that happened? You heard it. Where was, where was it? You were with me. I don't remember. He could have said it, I mean, but I don't remember that. You, that seemed to me, in a, that would stick out in a mother's mind. I mean, we, it was the my boyfriend and The man threatens these... your son with bodily harm. And I he don't condone that. He is an adult. That. I don't care. See, he's an adult too. He's 20. Oh. But I know I don't condone that. It's not what I'm saying, but he's no, not... No, you do condone it. I don't condone... Yes, you do, because you go lay with this man. You go confide in this man. You, you go meet with this man that threatened your son with bodily harm. Your child. I have talked to him out of it. He said, he goes, Lisa, you know I probably would never touch your child. I know or your kids. You know how I know that. I know how much they mean to you, and I would never do that. He says that after <clears> the <throat> fact... Yeah, because every time he confronts Jordan, Jordan calls me and I have to go show up so he doesn't do anything to Jordan. Is there a point at which you would say this has gotten just really dysfunctional? I think we're at that point. You think? <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you hear what she's saying. We've been at that point and, for years. And she's saying that you are a controller, that you stalk her, that you try to build a fence around her, you try to confine her. You try to do all of this. In fact, you said, I have the right to do that. I've tried to do I that. I have huh? the right to keep her from going and to And it doesn't work. I have, I, I, it, it, yeah. And she admitted a week ago she's been sleeping with him every night. So I, That's not true. That's not true. You did told me a week ago. Did she need to admit I that I never said you? every no. night. I mean, did you, no. did, like, I you didn't notice she wasn't more. there? I know. When she comes home, I, I know what she's doing. I tell her that. She goes, oh, we were just talking all night till 6 in the morning do, or do you doing know? this at yeah, a but, public restaurant. Yeah, but like, how yeah, is okay. that okay with you? You... You, it's not okay with you, I, I'm, it's not I don't okay. get it. I'm curious what all of you on Twitter feel. Uh, go to my Twitter page and weigh in. Here's the question I ask. Is there a future for this marriage? I know what I think it needs to be. I'm going to hear what you say, and I'll give you the results here a little bit later in the show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. The kids are very angry with Lisa. My son Jordan calls me a whore and a slut almost on a daily basis. Rick has turned my kids against me. You're a podcast listener, and this is a podcast ad. Reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Lips and Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements, or run a reproduced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience with Lips and Ads. Go to lipsandads.com now. That's L I B S Y N ads.com. Hi, I'm Chris Gethard, and I'm very excited to tell you about Beautiful Anonymous, a podcast where I talk to random people on the phone. I tweet out a phone number, thousands of people try to call. 
talk to one of them, they stay anonymous. I can't hang up. That's all the rules. I never know what's going to happen. We get serious ones. I've talked with meth dealers on their way to prison. I've talked to people who survived mass shootings. Crazy funny ones. I talked to a guy with a goose laugh. Somebody who dresses up as a pirate on the weekends. I never know what's going to happen. It's a great show. Subscribe today. Beautiful Anonymous. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Childhood trauma. Were you parading men in and out of the home? <laughs> no. She favored married men. If you're so right, how come this is so wrong? That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... Unfortunately, the kids are in the middle of all this. They've seen the hurt that it's caused me. The kids don't understand why I continue to put up with it. And I try to explain to them, one day you guys will be married and you'll fight for your marriage. The kids are very angry with Lisa. Rick discusses my affair openly with the kids. They make fun of my boyfriend. They make fun of me. It's like a group effort. There's been times when he has had the kids follow me and spy on me and report back to him. My son Jordan calls me a whore and a slut almost on a daily basis. It hurts my feelings because he's my son. He's supposed to respect me. But because of his dad, he was brought up not to, as were the rest of the kids. I was eating at a restaurant with my boyfriend, and Rick and my son Jordan came in and confronted my boyfriend and called me a slut in front of everybody. Rick has turned my kids against me. They're brainwashed, and they don't even know it. How do you feel about the kids being involved in this? I, I don't like it, but... How do you feel about the kids being involved in this? I wish they weren't involved, but they... How do, how do you choke? You get this them is involved. The Alexa? They see everything right? with their own eyes. What, what, how do you guys feel about all this? It's just disappointing. Um, she defends him over us, and I see the hurt that my dad's going through. What, what do you guys want to see happen here? What, what, what do you want to see that would bring the most peace to this family? A decision. Either them staying together or splitting up, but it can't continue this way. Yeah, I'm looking at the Twitter feeds up here. It's just our audience follows this show. And they're blowing up about you guys having the kids involved in all of this. Uh, healed underscore hearts tweeted, uh, kids should never be in the middle. Let's pull her up on Polly. So you think these kids are in this middle of this, this war between them and shouldn't be? It is not okay to cheat. I really hope both of you get help, take responsibility, stop making excuses, and get out of denial. Dr. Phil always says, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Good point. You don't want the kids in the middle of this. You're not doing anything constructive here. He's the one always involved, involving do, do them. Do you have any he, sentences that start with uh, something other than he? What do you own about this? That I cheated. I shouldn't have done it. Two wrongs don't make a right. I shouldn't have done it. I didn't get yeah. the kids involved. You're the one flaunting around town with them openly, and the kids see it, You too. tell them all the time. <clears throat> You're blanking the whole neighborhood. Jordan knows. Exaggerating like what, that. I would never do something like what that. What is your responsibility here? What are you doing here? I mean, is this an ego thing for you? Can you not admit that this thing has run off in the ditch in some way? I don't mean, I, I'll admit to that. I think it's, You've cheated, I think it's, she's cheated, she is cheating. So you got to either work on this or shut it down. Yeah. What you're doing as parents, let me talk to the two of you collectively here. As, as parents, and, and I don't care that your children are 18 and 19 and on that, you never finish parenting. You are role models here. You are role modeling disrespect. You are role modeling deceit. You are role modeling lying. You're, you're role modeling everything negative that I could think to put on a list. And, and your kids are sitting down here going, you know, what the hell's going on? They just, I mean, Alexa said it pretty well. Just make a decision. But you notice... Just, she, just do something. But do you notice her dad, when you ask about his affairs, she's... Oh, my God. They don't care... After everything I just said, you want us to talk about her dad some more. Really? Yeah. What is it you need to do? I need to stop, ha um, stop having an affair. But you're not going to stop, are you? you? You said you tried to break up six times. Five. I did break up, and then I went back. I didn't see him for a few, maybe a few days, a week. I went back. But boyfriend 
cries and says, don't leave me, right? And you feel bad. I don't want to hurt either one of them. Yeah. That's true. Look at, look at these two down here. Are you hurting them? All right. I guess it does come down to exactly what Lisa says. I mean, her husband and family or her boyfriend. Uh, will there be a decision here? Is it too far gone? I mean, I'm going to tell them what I think when I come back. My son, Jordan, and I, our relationship has eroded tremendously. It's because he doesn't approve of the affair that I'm having. Alexa and I haven't had a close relationship in years. She asked me on a continual basis, are you pregnant by your boyfriend? What do you see in an old man? She constantly ridicules me. My mom's affair is a big reason why our home is in pieces. I do not respect her. Listen, um, right now, she is behaving in an outrageous way. And that overshadows your behavior, which works out really nicely for you if you weren't talking to me. Uh, you've cheated in this relationship, and now you've got her, and so it's the male thing. You want to possess her. You want to get her back. And your way of trying to remedy this is to control her. That will never, ever work. You can chase her, but you will just die tired. Because if she wants away from you, there's nothing you can do to contain her, control her, or run her down. Now, you might could inspire her to return to you. I, I don't know. How, how many hours do you think you've spent with your red truck boyfriend in the last 11 and a half months? Would you say... No. Is it like 10 hours a week? Whenever I see him, it's only two hours a day. Well, it would be 14 hours a week. Uh, but it's not every day. day. Not it's when you not come every at five, day. Not when you come home at 5, 6 in the morning. That's not two hours How a day. How often do I come home at 5 or 6 in the morning? Quite often. That's you keep me true. up. Well, a conservative estimate then would be 40 hours a month. If you took that 40 hours a month... Yeah. ...and that was invested on healing yourself... Healing this family. If you took that 40 hours a month, think of all that energy, all of that passion, all of that, all of that effort. If that was put in to fixing what is, is on the brink of disaster, instead of chasing after somebody that is hugely flawed, in my opinion... I wonder if we would be in a different place than we are now if that had been going on for 11 and a half months. Because if you spent 40 hours, that would be almost 500 hours that were invested on learning, healing, talking, solving, changing. You can't tell me that wouldn't make a difference. Uh, just would that make a difference? There's no communication between he and I, so I don't know. You, I, I could try, but if I try, if nobody else wanted to try, do you see my point? No. You don't see my point? No. 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 So change begins with you, and it's, everybody's got... That's not a cliche. The first house you clean is your own. You've got to get yourself in a position where you can hold your head high with your children, yeah. with your spouse. You've got to do what you've got to do. He clearly is going to have to either plug in or get out. One of the two. You will never, ever fix this situation if either one of you are involved with somebody outside the marriage. And if you aren't willing to stop that, if you aren't willing to say, leave me alone, I'm going to work on this situation and try to fix it and heal it, then you might as well get a divorce because it will never, ever get better. And you're right. Somebody will wind up getting hurt. Your son, your husband, your boyfriend, somebody's going to wind up getting hurt here. So you've either got to be willing to work on this or not. And the same thing is true with you. That's right. Okay. That's all I'm just telling you. Or your family's going to disintegrate before you're out.
Are you willing to do that? If I, I arrange am. for help for both of you, are you willing to do it? Yes, I am. I will make that gift to your family if you will do so it. so much, Dr. Phil. Okay. All right. Now, I was curious what all of you on Twitter felt when it came to Lisa and Rick's marriage. So we just tweeted, is there a future for this marriage? The results are yes, 5%, no, 95%. So based on your history and pattern, 95% of my audience understand that. That, that has responded to this says no, and, and you right. see why. I understand completely, yes. A lot of them are going to doubt whether you have the gumption to cut that relationship off. You'll see. I do. Do it for your family. Do it for you. Give it a chance. All right, when we come back, she's currently cheating on her husband and sees nothing wrong with it. I'm going to talk to another lady about this when we come back. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Okay, while we were talking, a tweet came in that I wanted to address from Sweet Tia 79 She tweeted, uh, at Dr. Phil, married 13 years, cheating, Works for me. Now, Sweet Tia79 wanted to remain anonymous, so she's on the phone. Uh, are you there? I am. So what makes you think this is working for you? Well, because of the fact that I don't have a destructive relationship with my husband, I'm cheating purely for sex. Okay. Um, and how is that okay? I mean, what, what, um, is he, does he have someone that he sees for sex? Uh, not that I know of. Um, it, not that it's okay. It's just uh, it, it, compl it balances everything's good in my marriage except that aspect. So that's all I'm missing, and that's all I need when I cheat. Okay. What, um, does he know about it? No. Okay. Well, let me tell you why that's not okay, okay? <laughs> You've got deception in your relationship. That's not good. You don't want that. And that will come back to bite you. And are you cheating with a married man? Yes. So you've got two relationships involved here. And that sounds uh, not only selfish, but dysfunctional. Uh, do you, are, you have no attraction to your husband? Or he has no attraction to you? Uh, no, it's not that at all, actually. He's quite a bit older than me. Um, and I do have high sex drive, and he doesn't. H how old are you? 33. And how old is he? 45. Boy, that hurts. <laughs> okay, well, I have two words of advice for you. <laughs> Doctor and Viagra. <laughs> um, I, you know, do, I mean, maybe he has a physical problem. Maybe he needs to take something, whatever, but... This is not a solution. You need to try to fix this inside the marriage, not by turning outside the marriage. And 45 is not a quite a bit older. Um, <laughs> the, he still has many years of functional life left, I promise you. <laughs> All right. Fancy Dancy 17 just tweeted, friend cheated, family torn apart, lifetime of regrets, no excuse. So fancy dancy, what do you what do you say? I've seen this tear apart a lot of families. I do not think that first of all anyone in this situation is sorry. They only care about their own particular circumstance. They do not care about the care about the children. Everyone's out for their own needs and people would rather stay comfortable versus dealing with pain and you're taking away everyone's choices in that matter. You you really do introduce a whole different element and it is a very selfish and immature thing to do. I've got one more person here, Jerry's Hilo, um, and he says, love dating married women, no strings attached, exciting and fun. Really? You say it, it works for you, right? Yeah, it actually does. 
I'm just out, I'm just out there to please the women. Basically, you put it this way: if the, if the woman's gonna come out to cheat, there's only one thing on her mind. She's out there to cheat and cheat only. So it's like, I'm out there. I'm single. I'm out there, you know, doing my thing. If uh, she's if she's if she's out there to cheat, why not be me? How, you know, any other guy would love to pick up on her. So I'm the guy to just be there. I'm more of like to listen to her. So you're basically providing a service. <laughs> basically, for free. And how, how old are you? I'm 25. 25. Yeah. Ever been married? Uh, no. You gonna get married? Uh, when the time comes, yeah. If I find the right girl, yeah. Yeah, well, karma's a bitch. <laughs> I want to thank all of my guests and everyone on Twitter who tweeted today. You never know when I might spot your tweet and bring you from the virtual world right into the show. So keep them coming. If you want to be part of the conversation, go to drphil.com. Thanks for being here. Yeah.